Hey. <sighs> I'm gonna be completely honest with you here. The last Liars Club meeting was astonishingly eye-opening, even for someone like myself who's practically had his eyes taped open from all the hours of sorting through your hot tips. <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I guess there was still more I had to learn about secrets. Over the years, I've gotten surprisingly good at keeping, spilling, and plastering people's secrets all over the internet. And I always thought I was doing it, not just for my own career, but because that's what people wanted. But this week, I, I really had to examine my own intentions. Let me take you on a little journey. Imagine growing up a handsome young devil. You seemingly have everything going for you. The brains of Einstein, the face of a soap star, and the brawn of a moderately average high school athlete. Most parents look at you like a golden child. Unfortunately, your dad isn't most parents, and nothing, not even all the trophies and awards you have won impresses him. But, you know, it's okay. You figure your dad is just not the kind of dad who cares about superficial things, like good grades. You keep doing the work, knowing that one day he's going to realize you're the son he's always wanted. Now fast forward through this after-school special of a life to your freshman year at college when you make a friend. Let's call him Son of Will. You two do everything together. Lift weights, keg stands, hold each other's hair when the other's vomiting. The years roll on and your bromance blossoms into what can only be described as a bro relationship. He is your very best friend, so it's a no-brainer that when you find out his mom canceled Thanksgiving to work, you invite him over to your house, where your mom will serve her famous turkey, and your little sister will insist that you watch the parade while making cookies. At first, all is normal. Your favorite cousin Wax is poetic about volunteering in a disaster-ridden country, and your mom is worrying about everything from air pollution to the fact that kids spend too much time on the internet. So imagine your surprise when Son of Will starts telling a story about your shared shenanigans, something you would never bring up at the table, and your father, the man who isn't impressed by a near-perfect SAT score, begins to ask incredibly engaging follow-up questions. For a second, you think it's you he's impressed by, because your imitation of the security guard chasing you out of the supposedly haunted admin building was spot on. But then you realize it's not you at all. It's son of Will he's impressed by. And this friend of yours, instead of passing the baton, keeps talking, telling more and more stories, some that don't even have you in them. Your dad glows. You didn't even know he could be that happy. Let's just say the weekend is a long one. And when it finally ends, you think you've come to peace with it all. But just as you're packing up son of Will's Tesla with piles of clean laundry, your dad pulls you aside just to say, that's the perfect man right there. You're lucky to have him as a friend. Hold on to that one. You could learn a thing or two from him. Fast forward six months, you're back at school and suddenly forced to decouple with the school paper. And when you go to Son of Will, a person whose back you'd have before your own to tell him about it, all he says is, maybe you should have fact-checked whether it was true or not that the lunchroom was adding laxatives to the pudding. And sure, you know what? Maybe you should have. But in this moment, all you needed was a friend. And it's in this moment thrown from your post that you realize that you were born alone. You die alone. And you might as well go through this whole world alone. So you stop talking to Son of Will. Not on purpose. You're just busy. You aren't here to make friends. You're nobody's sidekick. You're the hero of your own story. Insert all the other Pinterest quotes that they've put on coffee mugs to motivate people. You've started the Colvin Cauldron and you have hundreds of secrets being sent to you daily. You do your best to sort them out. You aren't a revenge site or anything, but sometimes revenge hides under the guise of trying to mete out justice. You are just one person after all. You see, I didn't start the cauldron looking for power, but soon I had it. And even though everyone acts like I'm the face of evil incarnate, they're the ones sending me the hot tips, the secrets their best friends told them, and the poll numbers for the hottest professor of the year. The same people who sneer at me for rumor mongering set alerts on their phone just so they can be in the know. The more I saw how people turned on each other in private, the less I cared about what people thought of me in public. Again, we all die alone. But then something happened. Well, to be precise, Bella happened. 
I can't share with you all the details of the infamous history of lying dinner party, though I will say that the rumors of blood ceremony are definitely false. But you see, Bella, it's a small thing, but she trusted me. And so did Benny, but Bella told me a secret. Not in the way I'm normally told secrets where I'm being prodded to make them public. And like the professor said, it bonded us. It made me realize that we might die alone, but we don't have to live that way. So in the spirit of living my best life, I wanted to say, sorry for telling some of the secrets that I've revealed in the past. Most of them weren't mine to tell. I'm sorry to any of you who have been hurt, even indirectly, by the cauldron. But hold on a second before you think I've changed to the core. I still think privacy is a thing of the past. And if we decide to ditch privacy, we need to embrace transparency, be who we really are. And in that spirit, I want to admit something very publicly to you all. I am, <laughs> it's hard for me to even say this, <sighs> but I'm, I'm bad at math. I know you're shocked. This outer core of perfection does indeed hide an Achilles heel, and that heel being anything related to calculus. <laughs> there, it's out. <sighs> I actually feel a lot closer to you guys now. Do you feel it too? Well, Professor, that was quite the soiree you threw. I, I have been to my fair share of fancy parties, and that one undoubtedly stood out. I'm under a contractual binding agreement that prevents me from disclosing what truly happened, but just trust me, it was dramatic and romantic. But I digress. This week has been all about secrets. According to Moynihan, secrets are at the root of why we lie. Of course, there's a lot of science that backs this up, but if you think about it, it's really just common sense. We all do things we're not proud of, you know, things we hide from ourselves as much as other people. Secrets are like armor. They're protective and heavy. Now we slow you down, but still sometimes necessary. You know, life's a battle after all, and well, who would go into battle without armor? But soon, secrets won't really have a purpose anymore. At least that's what my mother and the professor are aiming towards. I'm sure you've heard of Cuff from press conferences and news articles. The innovations of this technology are astounding. More advanced detection of heart rate variants, measuring the impulses of the hippocampus and the limbic nervous system, even radial pore detection on your skin to measure Eckerin's sweat flow. All in a little bracelet. It's still in beta, but once it hits the market, there won't really be a point in keeping secrets from the people around you. We'll probably end up trusting people a lot more. And the things that we think are dirty enough to keep a secret, well, they'll just be normalized by society. Thus, in a transparent society, we won't have to hide who we are anymore. The name Wilson will be synonymous with honesty for the rest of the time. Personal truths will cease to exist and there will only be the truth. Maybe then my mother will have time to have dinner with the family. I wonder what the professor will do with all his spare time. The professor has asked us to consider the role of secrets in our society, and I just have to say, that is so normative of him, to assume that human beings are the only ones among us who carry secrets. During my time with the bees, I learned those democratic little creatures have many secrets of their own in the form of ornate Weigel dances. Speaking of Weigel dances, last year while you were all crying, Irish scientists discovered a way to transmute tears into electricity. Talk about uncovering a secret power that society not only ignored, but placed shame upon. In a lot of ways, I feel like those two are ducks. As you have likely heard from many of my History of Lying classmates, we had the infamous ceremony at the professor's house. I won't share too many details other than the wine was French, the grapes were perfection, and the professor's house was truly a cabinet of curiosities where one could sit back and indulge in an array 
of strange objects. One thing that became very clear to me over the course of this experience is that I seem to be a locus of all personal projections. And while this is an amazing occurrence, much like what my idol Cindy Sherman captures in her infamous photographs, I'm both humbled and proud to be a vessel for all of humanity, but... I will say, sometimes it's hard to be the truth holder for so many dreams, anxieties, and secrets. I know I'm not exactly trusted around campus, but that doesn't mean I should be the dumping ground for everybody else's projections. It's amusing to me that the same people who are fighting so publicly for facts are willing to create fictions about me without a moment's hesitation. I guess that is a big thing that I learned from this class and my time in the limelight. Oftentimes, the secrets we accuse other people of having are our own. I'm ready for this week's topic. Secrets. Um, while we're on the subject, I, I would like to take this opportunity to um, address a secret of mine. A secret of mine. A lot of you guys have been asking in the comments if I have Asperger's or ADHD or OCD or something of that nature. And uh, this, this is nothing new. The truth is that I'm, I'm not diagnosed. But, um, you know, I have tried to self-diagnose. But many of my quirks don't interfere with my day-to-day -day life, so uh, labeling it as a disorder is impossible. I have hope for one, though, for a diagnosis. Because then, you know, if something's wrong with you, you, there's a chance it could be fixed, right? And then maybe I, maybe I could fit in. What I've come to find, though, is that the world doesn't need me to be normal. Thing is, I never really regarded that as a secret. It just wasn't public knowledge. You know, just because I'm not prepared to talk about something, just because I'm not ready to talk about something yet, doesn't mean I'm prepared to, to lie about it. Like, think about, think about when you have a crush on someone for the first time, right? Are you just gonna run up to them point blank in front of a big group of people and, and say, say everything? No, you're gonna wait for the right moment. But does that mean that every time you saw her, or, or anyone, you know, in, in public or on campus or something, it's, you're lying? I don't think so. No, it's like Voltaire said, the secret to being a bore is to tell everything. So think about that the next time you're ready to spill the inner workings of your brain out on some poor soul because you think they've got nothing better to do than to listen to you. Okay, I don't have secrets. I don't. Most of the time, anyone could just ask me anything, but anyone could ask me anything, but for the most part, none of you do. You just rather make assumptions. For example, many of you assumed uh, from my last vlog that the lie was that uh, I have a robust social life. But in, in fact, I'm incredibly well connected with people from all around the world on sites like Wattpad and Reddit. You know, assuming is just the cumulative effect of a lack of knowledge and a lack of curiosity. If you want to know something about someone, just ask them. That's it, thank you. Hi, friends and neighbors. I don't know about you, but I am wiped out after this week. Whew. First, we're invited to this super secret fancy party at Professor M's house. Then, we're told that our mission, should we choose to accept it, is to reunite a very special secret with its owner. Gasp. And then, everyone starts blurting out confessions left and right. Like, literally just blurting them out. It was wild. I don't know how Professor M got them to do it. Better than an episode of reality TV. So many people are being voted off my little island now. I've eliminated at least half the class. It's true though, there aren't very many dispassionate liars. Most people lie about things that they feel strongly about, things which are personal to them, which is one reason people lie often and badly. It's kind of like martial arts training. Lots of people think they know how to fight. Very few people are professional fighters. 
So when people try to start fights, they end up looking silly and hurting themselves. Social engineers, on the other hand, are the Bruce Lees of lying. Since this vlog is gonna be more like a study in secrets, most of this will be acting lessons. Tip number three, others' secrets are your friends. Spies depend on secrecy. As soon as you've roped someone in, you want them to believe they can't tell anyone about the situation you've involved them in. Which is why spies depend on knowing the Mark's secrets. Secret desires, secret mistakes, secret lies. Most intelligence agents never get caught because people want their secrets kept that way. Now, on the subject of innovation and lying, some people like to say, Oh, in the information age, you can't get away with anything. Nothing is secret. Please, the internet is a playground for social hackers. The brain is like really, really malleable. It's called the illusory truth effect. The more often you hear the same piece of information repeated, the more likely you are to believe it. The more often you hear the same piece of information the repeated, more you the more likely the you are to believe it. The more often you hear They have been doing studies for years where they'll ask participants to mark a series of trivia statements, true or false. When they ask the same participants back anywhere from hours to weeks to months later, they'll give them some new statements as well as some from the old session. The ones that they've seen before, they are now more likely to rate them as true. That's why actual fake news is so dangerous. By exposing yourself to it, you're on your way to making it true in your mind. Remember this when you wonder if you're gullible. Every liar has an accomplice inside your brain. Realizing I couldn't control my own brain is what got me started in all this spy training, social hacking stuff. I thought, I should be as prepared as possible if I'm going to be doing battle with my brain for as long as I live. There, that's the truth. Or at least the only truth I'll ever again admit is the truth. Now, I realize I spent most of this video talking shop, but I don't want you to think I'm slacking on my sleuthing, Professor M. Alvaro ended up being a much less interesting kind of liar, the lazy kind. However, his confession did help me narrow down my list of suspects. That, and I've gathered tons of information through my social network. To finish up, I just need to dot my I's, cross my T's, and umlaut my U's. Catch me next time, if you can. <clears throat> By now we've established that I have no idea how to start a vlog, but here I am again. The things I'll do to solve a good unsolved crime. This week for homework, we've been asked to talk about secrets and their roles in our lives and society. And I'll just start by saying, I think we all have a conditional relationship with secrets. You can't really just say they're good or they're bad definitively, you know? Some secrets hold so much weight and have so many repercussions that they actually become dangerous. I mean, you know the butterfly effect. The idea that a butterfly could flap its wings in Africa, creating a series of events that ends with a hurricane in Florida. Well, I believe some secrets hold that power. The longer they remain secret, the more chaos they can create. And that's a dangerous power to hold. At a certain point, secrets become weapons and I don't think there's any value to exposing them. It only serves to hurt the people around you. Look at cheaters. If a guy admits to his girlfriend that he's been cheating on her over the last year, who does that serve? I mean, sure, it wipes his guilt, but now his girlfriend has to deal with the news, internalize it, and make a decision she didn't want to make all because he admitted to something she didn't know about. Who did that help? I don't know, I've also never had a real boyfriend, besides Max Stoltz in the sixth grade. But I just don't like that secrets can be weaponized and deployed at the right time to maximize somebody's hurt. I guess that makes me a proponent of keeping some personal things, well, personal. Unless it's a matter of public safety. In that case, shout it from the rooftops. I think the easiest way to avoid worrying that my best friends are breaking my pinky promises and sharing my deepest, darkest secrets is to just not share them in the first place. With social media, we're so obsessed with broadcasting how authentic and real we are, but just because it's a trend doesn't mean I want any part of it. I think the most interesting stuff is still surrounded by question marks in a macro way. The wildest conspiracy theories and the craziest stories still have so much mystery left. They leave a little secret secret. So why the hell are we so obsessed with sharing secrets? Every time I see a pack of girls making friends in the bathroom, they're just sharing secrets without any regard for the chaos they might unleash. Think about the butterfly effect, ladies. 
Who knows, though? Technology has already changed the truth. It's given us a plethora of opportunities to have secret identities and secret behaviors. Maybe one day keeping secrets will be illegal. Maybe I'll regret this entire rant. Maybe this rant doesn't even make sense. I'm thinking that's highly likely, not even a question at all. But I guess that's for you guys to decide now. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for everyone who keeps tuning into these. It's nice to have some added faces to the BSA and recent protests. Today, we are tasked with talking about secrets in our lives and how new technology impacts secrets and secret keeping. First of all, I completely agree with Professor M. Secrets lead to lies. I also think most lies are often spread by capitalist structures of power who want to keep systems of oppression in place. Let me say that again in case you couldn't keep up. Lies are told by people in power who feel justified in telling those lies because they want to remain in control. And how this relates to technology, it's actually at the heart of how I first got my start in social justice activism. I was cyberbullied in middle school, and it was the first time I was able to see how technology could be used to spread lies about somebody while keeping their attacker's identity a secret. In order to take back the power from my attackers, I did the one thing they least expected. I made myself even more accessible in technology. I aired all my secrets and took away all their ammunition. Living my truth online and offline showed me how ugly the world can be but it also gave me purpose. My activism was born and I've been fighting ever since. Technology, for better or for worse, has infinitely expanded the reach of every human on the planet. It's also made it easier to tell lies and keep secrets through anonymous servers and usernames. It's also made it invaluable for people with like minds who want to fight the powers that be. So the real question is, what can the Dr. Wilson-funded Moynihan-powered cuff really change? Or will this be another handcuff placed on us? Another false sense of security while the same people in power use their latest technology to cover up their lies to us. Well, that's all for me tonight. Please join me at the Quad tomorrow to protest the professional paid disparity that still exists at Colvin. Until next time, bye guys. Buenos dias, beautiful people. Please forgive Bella. She partied a little too hard last night. Ni siquiera era una fiesta. It was more like a murder mystery dinner or like a poor man's game of find the clue. Oh, clue. I think I would be Colonel Mustard and you would be Scarlet who's her name? Okay. So this week's homework is about secrets and the role they play in our lives. So secret isn't necessarily a lie. It's more about the intention. Was it your intention to hide something? Now, we all have secrets. Studies show that the average person is walking around holding 13 secrets at a time. And the more we're confronted by them is the more we obsess over them. You know what? I'm tired of this. I'm tired of living in duality, the partying and the studying. I mean, we're writing a book of theology, but people think we're dumb because we don't know how to say the word bagel in English. I'd like to see them try to take an engineering mathematics test in a language that they learned on a YouTube video with the captions on. I'm tired of the isolating popularity. I'm tired of hanging out with people just because they want to collab. And most of all, I'm tired of not living my truth. B, you don't have to do this. No, it's frustrante, you know? I mean, no one even figured out our secret. It's like nobody cares. They care to watch an Insta story, but not to question it. I mean, I'm pretty sure Wilson's the one that had our secret, and I looked around, not a single clue. It's like, that's how good we play this game. Bueno, si lo quieres hacer, I'm not gonna stop you. Tengo que decir la verdad. I mean, I need to get this off of me. Bueno, yo te amo, y todo tiene solución. Gracias, yo también te amo. <sighs> We're broke. No, it's not a joke. Our financial aid barely covers this ugly dorm that we live in. We're looking at tens of thousands of dollars in debt. At first, we thought it was easy and almost fun to pretend to be something we're not. But now we're experts at pretending to look wealthy. Snap the right photo with the right accessories, the right smile. <laughs> Simple, right? Wrong! People say fake it till you make it, but what they don't understand is how all-time-consuming faking can become. How taking the right picture takes a bajillion tries and only needs you three minutes to do your actual homework. Sometimes my face hurts from taking the same picture a bajillion times. <sighs> Honestly, I always thought college was a waste, but it meant so much to our mom that we go to one of the top schools. So instead of going to the state school and, you know, making it cheaper, we decided to figure it out. Turns out figuring it out meant monetizing our twins by becoming influencers. Do you think we're bougie and entitled? Good, but we're not. It's a lie. Well, He's actually one of the most entitled people I've ever met. But besides that, all the designer brands and the champagne, it's a lie that we just want you to buy into. And not because we want to lie, but because if you believe us, then you follow us. And then we get the sponsors we need in order to pay for this insanely expensive college. A college that half of you never even thought about attending. <sighs> there, I said it. 
Esto va a ser diferente ahora. Different will be good for us. Yeah, that's easy for you to say, Miss. I'm blinded by my love, and now I'm donating all my designer knockoff handbags to charity. No va a pasar, no seas ridículo. Whatever. Well, now you all know the truth. Just like many of you guys, we've used social media to make it a better version of ourselves. And not that it was all a lie, but it was highly saturated with the rich kid without problems filter. But we don't linger on the past. We're taking this next step of our journey with Janus. A new door has opened and we're walking through it with pride. And now, time for sleep. <laughs>